You do realize this camp was closed down like 20 years ago. Some woman, she went fucking nuts, killed all these counselors, blamed them for her son's drowning. Her son, Jason, he came back. No, no, no. I remember uh, I was a Boy Scout, and uh, I saw early trailers from Friday the 13th, and that got me right away interested in it. Obviously, then later at Boy Scouts, it was like lore, you know, and here I get to recreate like a campfire conversation yes. just like we had them. I just found some broken down cabins over there. It's gotta be the old camp. I was young, it was sort of one of those, you know, bootleg tapes that everybody passed around. I saw it when I was way too young. Please, kids at home, don't watch this. When you wait a few years, for the love of God, there's a lot of dunity, a lot of blood in this film. <gasps> it's one of those movies that, you know, once it's on tape, that everybody sort of passed it around. And, you know, we loved it. I remember the character of Jason, and my parents would sit and watch these horror movies, and of course, I was way too young, so they were always like, okay, close your eyes, close your eyes now, and I'd sit there going, Okay, can I open them now? You go back and you watch the original one, and you know they're wearing the, the Kevin Bacon his little shorts that barely go down his thigh, and you know it just got really hot. So anytime I mention Kevin Bacon, I start sweating. So <laughs> the one experience I take away from the first one that I saw, they're into the sex scene. They're turned over and they're spooning, and he just got one hand cupped around your breast. I think I, I, I'm gonna put that in. I'm gonna take that, but just one, it's just one cup. And I, I, I'm, I'm gonna thank you, Kevin Bacon. I was 11 years old. I saw it at my friend Rob's house. Now they're gonna have to clear that guy's name. That's all right. They'll just put a big sort of black thing around my mouth and be like, plop. But uh, I saw it at his house. Totally not supposed to see it. And the thing that stuck with me the most was when he jumps out of the lake. <laughs> I squirted in my pants. I was terrified. You still squirt in your pants. I it's do. Sort of a bit of a bedwetting thing you have. It's true, but I'm working on that. A buddy of mine named Eric and I sat down and, uh, and watched the movie. And he lived near um, a, a park in San Antonio called Comanche Hill. And we ended up going out to Comanche Hill and walking around and going, Ch -ch -ch -ch, you know, kind of making the noises and trying to scare each other. I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a wimp. So horror movies are hard for me to watch. But this, this experience helps knowing that it's just pretend. <laughs> I had to keep reminding myself of that. I was always the youngest of my older cousins and my sister and stuff like that, so I remember going to see it with them. I was freaked out, man. Like, um, but but I enjoyed it. You know, it's it's that uh, how do you call it? it's that um, guilty pleasure. I really really enjoy. That's when I I enjoy watching people get scared. I was young, and me and my cousin were uh, we were up late one night and we were watching it on television, and. Uh, I will never forget the one scene I remember is uh, it's just like this long shot down the road at Camp Crystal Lake, and you just see this guy walk across the street with like a, a machete and he has a bag over his head. Like, talking about giving the chills, man. Oh yeah, it was amazing. I remember I rented a VHS machine, or my parents did, and the first two movies that I rented were uh, uh, Friday the Thirteenth One and Two, and I'm like, ah, I'm old enough to watch horror movies. This is awesome, and. Uh, I watched them and I was scared out of my pants. I went to camp in Maine and, you know, I went to Camp Crystal Lake. It wasn't called that, it was called something else. And um, it was an amazing experience to get scared shitless from watching these movies. And we all have our Camp Crystal Lake experiences. And so that's why when you get presented with the opportunity to make the movie, it's impossible to say no to it. If you truly are a fan, you can't say no to that opportunity. I mean, let's, let's, you know, face it. These movies are exploitation films when they first started. It's about sex, drugs. God knows we have a lot of those. Violence and, you know, boozing. I mean, that's what it is. That's how it started. That's the audience it's for. We totally embrace us in this film. And I think we amp it up like you've never seen it before. We're partying, we're drinking, we're having fun, but it's a new group of people. It's new and fresh and totally different than the others. It's a fun movie. I mean, these are kids having sex, doing drugs, and basically having fun. So what you have is a wonderfully vivacious group of kids. And in between it, you have horribly, horribly bloody and frightening scares. Ah! 
Why do you think there's been 17 installments? Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. There's only been 12. I don't know. It, it really is scary to think if there's somebody out there like this lurking throughout the woods. Oh, my God. The slasher films that sort of started the idea of horror films, um, those are sort of iconic. Friday the 13th being one of probably two, maybe three. They're movies that like a person like myself saw when I was a kid and ever since then, I'm not gonna go camping in the woods. Not that I wouldn't like to, but you always think about Jason every time you go into the woods. Friday the 13th is a fun horror film. And not all horror movies are fun. You know, a lot of them are torture and you're not looking at the screen because you don't want to look at someone get their fingernails ripped off or have them put on a meat hook with an insert of a hook going in a back. So it's a classic, fun slasher film. And I think there's always an audience for a movie that, and then you throw in this iconic character who's wearing this hockey mask, and you know, the audience is, the audience is there for that. They love it. Our idea was to make it kind of like Batman Begins, which is a reboot, start fresh, make this much grittier, kind of a fast and loose Jason that we had never seen before. I think any villain, uh, or any true villain in a, in a film, uh, never sees himself actually as a villain. Uh, everyone says that Jason's the crazy evil character. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, in my mind, I'm not, I'm not playing it as, as an evil character. I mean, he, he's been wronged. I just won't be left alone, and so does he. And society has uh, shunned him and constantly done him wrong throughout his life, and he just wants to be left alone and he's fighting back. I wanted to definitely keep him more as a human being, as you know, a tragic figure more. Make him someone that was actually in the woods, surviving like a real human would. He's fast, he's not walking around like a zombie. If you were raised in the wild, you know, amongst the animals, you know, you're, you're, you're a hunter, you're maybe also a little bit leaner, quicker, and um, that was maybe the biggest departure we took. I'd like to think that it's still the same Jason, only reveal aspects that haven't been shown so far that, yes, he can be, you know, intimidating at the right moment. He can also be very cat-like and quick. He's territorial. It's not like he's going around just killing people randomly. I mean, if you invade his territory, you know, he's kind of protecting his turf. Unlike other movies, this will be the first movie, I think, where you'll see Jason kind of using his brains. I think that'll be pretty impressive. He's got a slightly misshapen head, but there are brains in it. That's true, actually, the misshapen head. This part is all hunter, this part all killer. Yeah. If you see an overdeveloped hunter area, avoid, avoid that guy. Indeed, indeed. We wanted to show the audience, that, you know, something of a young Jason and his mother. And, you know, in the first film, his mother is the killer. And uh, I think it was important to us to sh just give the audience a little glimpse of who Pamela Voorhees was. And just with a flashback, you can see young Jason, you can see what happens to his mother, and that alone can really show you why he has become what he has become. They picked a lot of the, the really good elements of these Friday the 13th films out, definitely in one, two, three, and four, and part of five. There were, there were things that people enjoyed about the film, those films, that I think they wanted to see more of. They want to see it expand a little. Fuck this guy, let's get out of here! This version of Jason is real. And when you are out camping with your friends, you're not thinking about ghost stories. You're thinking about, is there some crazy lunatic dude who lost his mama living in that tree over there? I, I don't know, I just like the newer version of Jason. He's much more frightening, because the first time that I saw him, I actually, thought to myself, if I really saw this guy in the woods, I, I, might, I might lose it. I might wet myself. With the design, they basically just said, the only thing that we have input on right now is the iconic hockey mask of what you know it looks like. Tweak it a bit if you want. Don't stray too much from what the real thing is. I said, great, OK. That's, that's good, because we don't want to reinvent the wheel. Sean Cunningham created just a great villain. And people love to watch him kill. They just love it. I mean, it's just, that's it. And there is something magical in Jason Voorhees. And it, it transcends everything else. I think that people can empathize with Jason. And I think that at the end of the day, we all want to kill somebody. There's always something, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, you know, he's just one of those guys that, I mean, you know, I love that unstoppable killing machine. 
This is huge. Do you know Friday the 13th is gonna be big? Especially when you see who's behind this film, you know it's being done right. Action! This is the first time you've had a huge producer and a visual wizard that Marcus Nispel is come in and take this franchise and they're gonna elevate it to a place that it's never been before. It's always been kind of low rent movies, movies that we love, but this is gonna be something new and it's gonna be a big jump. He's a, he's a cinematic genius, man. Like, uh, I can't wait to, to, you know, to sit down and really watch it, you know, full scope. I love how, in the middle of a scene, if he wants something else, he'll tell you. You really got to show me fear on this one, OK? By integrating Daniel Pearl and Marcus together, we kind of felt very comfortable that the movie was going to have a unique and beautiful, rich look. Marcus understands the scares, maybe better than anyone else who I know. The genre has evolved over the years, and to be able to reintroduce it to a new generation, I think, is, is really exciting. We really up the ante with some of the kills and get right in your face, and we're showing quite a bit. It's going to just leave you on a kind of like a runaway train that's going up and down, just like a roller coaster, and it's going to veer off somewhere. This Friday the 13th is going to reestablish what we felt the first time we ever saw the original Friday the 13th. It's so cool to continue it and just make, make it for our generation and be that part of that group that makes it for us.